Hi guys, welcome back to lesson two of Biomes. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for handing in your work last week. It was really, really good. Um, so remember to do that this week. Uh, the hand in date is Thursday the 30th at 12 o'clock. So remember to do that and email your teacher or upload to Teams. If you can get on Teams, and you've looked at the work on Teams, you can upload it, your work straight to there. And it's a lot easier uh, for us to mark it for you as well. So if you can do that, do that. If you can't, then just email your teacher and that's fine. OK, so our title for today is Factors Influencing the Distribution of Biomes. So last week, we looked at uh, where biomes are in the world. We did a lot of map work and then we uh, compared two biomes. So today we're going to be looking at what determines where we get these biomes on the planet. So write that title down and then we're going to write the keywords. So the first keyword is convectional rainfall. Now, this is a type of rain that occurs when the energy of this if of the sun heats the Earth's surface and causes water vapour to evaporate. So when the sun shines down on the Earth and it makes all the water on the Earth's surface evaporate and goes up into the sky. High pressure. Now, this is sometimes known as an anticyclone. It is a region where the atmospheric pressure at the surface is greater than its surrounding environment. The air is stable and sinking. Low pressure. This is sometimes known as a depression or a cyclone. It is a region where atmospheric pressure is lower than the surrounding locations. The air is unstable and rising. Quite complicated words, but we'll go over them as the lesson goes on. So pause the video and write them down. OK, guys, so we're going to do the same as we always do. We're going to do a little quiz. So just number your margins and write the answer. You don't have to write the question. So question one. What does a red line on a climate graph show? What unit is precipitation measured in? Name a biome that has one continuous growing season. Which global biome has a distinct wet and dry season? Which global biome has a large temperature range? Name the biome which has vegetation like mosses, grasses and wildflowers. Seven, name the biome that covers 10% of the Earth's surface, yet has 90% of all plants and animal species. All right, guys, so pause the video, answer the questions, and then we'll show you the answers. Here are the answers. So just correct in green pen if you need to. Excellent. So what we're going to look at today then is how we've got different climates around our world and more importantly, why we have different biomes in different places on our planet. And it's all to do with how our air circulates around the globe. So here we call it global circulation. So how our air moves around the planet. Now that air movement determines what sort of climates we're going to have. So we're going to look at this cell, this air movement called a Hadley cell. There they are, you've got two there and you find them just north and south of the equator. So air moves in a circular movement. So you can see here, 
at the equator, this zero degrees line here, straight through the middle of the Earth, you can see the arrows of the Hadley cell are moving up and away. You see, up and away. This here is what we call low pressure. And that's air that rises. So low pressure, I'm going to call that LP. Low pressure is when air rises. As it rises, it's going to evaporate all of the moisture that is found at the Earth's surface. And as it evaporates it, it's going to take up into the sky. And as it gets cooler, it's going to condense into rain clouds. And after a while, that will rain back to Earth. So that's what happens at the equator. Air rises, it evaporates, it condenses, and then it rains again. And what biome do we find at the equator? What is that? It's a rainforest, exactly. So that makes sense. If the air is rising, condensing, and then raining, that's why we have rainforests at the equator. So if we look just north of the rainforest up here, we can see we've got deserts. Now something else happens here. If we look at the Hadley cell, what direction are there, is the air moving in? It's going down. So here, the air is going down. If the air is going down, it can't be evaporating any moisture. Therefore, the air has to be dry. So the air here is going down and we call this high pressure. I'm going to call that HP. So we've got high pressure when the, it goes down, when the air goes down, and that will bring it dry weather. And here we can see this is where our deserts are. We all know what deserts are like. They're dry. So here is where we've got dry weather. And the same is happening down here as well, south of the equator. Air is going down, high pressure, bringing dry weather. And again, at the, tropic, the tropical rainforests, air is going up, which brings wet weather. That's all you need to remember. Low pressure, air is going up, it's going to be wet. High pressure, air is going down, it's going to be dry. Okay guys, so you just want to remind yourselves here of what we've just looked at. So if you want, you can draw the diagram here of the Hadley cells at the equator and at the tropics, but just write these notes down as we go. So let's re recap. Rainforests are found at the equator. At the equator, the air pressure is low and therefore is constantly rising. And this will give you warm, light, unstable air. This results in constantly high temperatures and a high total rainfall per year. It rains every day. OK, and that's what happens there at tropical rainforests right along the equator. And there are no seasons. We don't have autumn, winter, spring or summer there. It's just summer all year round. OK, so this links on nicely to what we were talking about as air rises, it causes rain. Going back to our key term, this is what is called convectional rainfall. So what I want you to do here is pause the video for a couple of minutes and copy this diagram down. OK, hopefully you've written that down, you've copied this diagram down. Now we're going to label it to explain how low pressure brings rain. OK, so first of all, you've got constant heat from the sun shining down onto the Earth's surface all year round. This causes rapid evaporation from the ground. It makes all the moisture rise up. Warm, moist air rises really rapidly. 
As it gets higher, the air cools, it condenses and forms clouds. Then saturated clouds release heavy convectional rain and that rain falls back to earth. So it's this constant cycle of water being evaporated, condensing and then raining. And that is what we call low pressure. OK, so now we know what happens at rainforests at the equator. What happens at deserts at the tropics? So here we know that we've got lots of high pressure and this is where the air goes down. It descends. So what happens here then? What I would like you to do, guys, is just quickly draw this diagram, very, very basic diagram, and then we're going to write the notes next to it. So pause the video, draw the diagram. All right, so what happens here then? So at 30 degrees north and south of the equator at the tropics, cold, stable air starts to descend. That's when it starts to come down again from the Hadley cell. As air descends, it warms up and heats as it gets towards the surface. As air is descending, it does not produce clouds and rainfall, leading to continuous high pressure, basically dry weather. This results in a very dry climate. OK, guys, now we know what high and low pressure is. I'd like you to do this task in your books, please. Now, instead of writing this out, instead of writing all this out down there, what I want you to do is just number one to six in the margin of your book. OK, so wherever these numbers go, I would like you to write the correct word that you see down here. OK, so give yourself about four minutes and then we'll look at the answers. Excellent, guys. Right. So let's see what you got then. So deserts are the opposite to rainforests. The air is not rising, but instead it is descending at the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer, Tropic of Cancer. As it descends, no clouds form. This leads to very little rainfall. This leads to high pressure. As the sun's solar radiation does not travel too far, this leads to very high temperatures. However, deserts still have seasons as they are not located at the equator. Excellent. Well done, guys. OK, guys, so this is your extended writing piece. Um, I want you to look really carefully at the success criteria. I want you to use all of the words in your answer that are down here in the boxes here. You have to use all of the words in the right order. All you have to do is explain how convectional rainfall happens in the rainforests and how high pressure happens in the deserts. That's it. Before you attempt your answer, just have a look at this. Does this example meet the success criteria? Just have a read of it and then let's see if it meets all of these success criteria points. All right, let's have a look. So in the first paragraph, you just notice that they missed out the word condenses. Second paragraph. They've missed out the word descending there. They've not mentioned high pressure. And they got that wrong. We do not have one season in a desert. We have many. So therefore, the first paragraph was right. Convectional rainfall is partly explained. This does not contain all the words, though. Some of this is a bit muddled. 
For example, hot deserts have a hot desert has a very hot season, but not all year. Therefore, this doesn't meet the success criteria. So when you give it a go, guys, make sure you use all of the words in the key term list and you do it in the correct order. Good luck, guys. See you next week.